Welcome back listeners and viewers to a fourth episode in the podcast series From the Margins to the Mainstream highlighting the journey of the informal waste pickers community in Bengaluru a community which has been sidelined for far too long and forced to live in the dark with temperatures rising and water scarcity issue raising its ugly head it is imperative that we have a clear understanding of the situation at hand and what it means for us According to a study done by a team of officials from the Mines and Geology Department, fluoride content was as high as 5.54 mg per litre in borewell water in parts of Belandur, while the permissible limit for human consumption is 1.5 mg per litre. The contamination of groundwater in Bengaluru was mainly because of pollution caused by overflowing sewage, effluents discharged by industries and indiscriminate dumping of garbage. We now have with us Dr. Shashi Rekha, who retired as the Chief Chemist from the Department of Mines and Geology, Government of Karnataka. She has seen Bengaluru's groundwater go from portable to a toxic mix of heavy metals and bacterial pollution. So how the water quality in the city of Bangalore changed over the last 10 years? See, last 10 years, uh, what I can say is it's not completely deteriorated, but it has gone bad because the public awareness has come down and uh, the, a lot of industrial effluence is uh, occurring and also the sedimentation, erosion and the temperature and mostly of the sanitation part of it has affected our water body. The most important thing is sedimentation, erosion. And again, the most important thing is about the sanitation and the industrial effluence. These are all the taking place. One of the uh, important thing what I can give you this is, see wherever they will clean the sanitation hole or sanitation, uh, any unit or problem, the waste products will be put on the road itself so that nobody cares to pick it up or put it in somewhere where there can be no question of leakage. And uh, they must guide the, even the glass, grass uh, in the apartment they will grow and they put the litter in the outside so that they don't bother to put it in a proper way. So these are have made the water quality worst. Deteriorating water quality decreasing water levels and increasing demand for water are stresses for all. How is the effect of these issues different, especially with respect to slum dwellers and especially the marginalized communities such as the informal waste pickers in urban uh, settlement? See, this has a lot of uh, implement, uh, implicated on them because, see, the other uh, people, they will manage with the water quality, if they feel that water quality is not good or if it is not a portable, they will manage to buy it from outside and they will manage somehow. But what about the slum dwellers or the pickers and they will be the worst situation and to be frank, these are these people are the carriers of the diseases which will be spread to the community. These are the basically way when you get a cholera or a diarrhea or even a hepatitis B or any such diseases, these are all certainly starts from the slum dwellers and the pickers because they are the carriers of it. They doesn't bother about the sanitation, that is how it will and the community will be affected. Sanitation here, this plays a really vital important part on our water quality. The sanitation purpose is where sanitation, how does it affect? When you clean the car, you will put the water on the car with the soap and everything. It will fall on the land. You will feel happy that it is goes on the road. But do you all think that the, from the road, it is going to the underground water and the leafage is there and you are getting the water contaminated. Car littering, you will put the grass cutting or you will put something on the for the grass to grow. You will put the chemicals, you will put the pesticides, you will put the, the anything for that matter to grow well and to give a good yield to that matter, fertilizers or anything. Then 
where that it will go. Only 20% will take the plants, the other 80% will be left to the underground water and our, again your water will be contaminated. And the sanitation level or the water which is flowing outside, you will never make a clear picture of it so that it will pass throughout and it will drain out without leaking or without entering into the underground water, you will never make a proper way. And people who are in the slum, who are in the people who are do even walking or anything, they will pass their uh, uh, urine or anything like that matter, that which are the fecal, we have fecal matter, that will enter into underground water. It may be a uh, hundred yards away from it, but it will certainly enter into your ground water. That is how the sanitation and the, uh, everywhere in the, uh, even regarding the apartments or the houses, we have to have a good sanitation. We are seeing nitrate, presence of nitrate in groundwater sources in urban uh, slums. So, what are the reasons that nitrate contamination is increasing in groundwater level? In Bangalore, the mostly the affecting is by the usage of the any type of cow dung, I mean, cow dung doesn't have a nitrates more. It's the horse one, the product of the horse, sheep, it is highly uh, contaminated with nitrate only. And also some of the fertilizers they are using to grow good uh, yield of flowers. You can say, see in one fourth block, I can give you an example in a one house, uh, they used to grow roses in plenty and every flower show they, in the lal block, they used to get the first prize. Finally, the persons in the house were affected with so much of nitrate uh, contaminated uh, diseases. So they brought the sample, the doctor brought the sample to our lab to test it and it was so horrified, it was five times the standard unit of the nitrate content. So the problem is without the knowledge of it, without the awareness of it, what they are using it. See that even the, the horse tongue which you will get it nowadays here for 50 rupees only uh, one uh, something uh, 50 kgs or something like that it is very cheap. So they will put it on the, uh, their plants. It will grow here nicely but what is the uh, product of the groundwater? It will be completely contaminated with nitrate. So nitrate is badly affected with all these. Kindly, I will advise the people to give the awareness not to use it because the plants will take only 20% what you are putting it. 80% will be taken by the underground water only. See, the most of the people, uh, more 90% of the public will think that their water is good. By taste, they feel it is good. There will be no color, no sedimentation, no turbidity, no smell. So they will feel happy. But if they have nitrate, it is very bad for them, which it will be affected. And when you boil the water with having a nitrate in your bore well, it will be get doubled when you boil it. So that will also get affected. You will have cancer. And so nowadays, what they are doing is without testing, without undergoing any test, they will ensure that they will have an RO. They will feel that if you have an RO in your house, or it is like Amruta, oh, we are having RO, so we are safe to drink. But Long term drinking RO water is unsafe. Short term drinking water RO, yes, it is good, but not long term. It will have a kidney problem, it will have a acute gastric problems also. Nowadays, WHO has advised not to use RO because it will remove all the minerals. And also, the wastage of water again, you are dumping into your underground water and your water is contaminated with nitrates. So, ensure that your water is get, uh, please get tested once in a year at least, minimum. Uh, better to have six months, once in a year. Or you get it tested in your house, they can, you can do minimum tests so that you can, water is whether it is good for drinking or not, you take it. And then you can go accordingly to what measure you can have it. Whether you can boil it, whether you can have only the unit of UV or you have to have an RO because it has high nitrates. So these are some of the things which you have to see it and use it for drinking purposes. The water which you are having should be a portable and within the standard otherwise it will get affected. And one more thing I will tell you, hot water is always safer to use. 
hot water that is indirectly proportional to heart attack whereas soft water is directly proportional to heart attack that is why rvo water is unsafe for drinking for a long term so what are the major contaminants we see in urban area especially city of bangalore in city of the bangalore we are seeing lot of fecal coliforms that is the major thing e coli is plenty almost 80% of our water is not potable due to the coliforms only the other thing is nitrate fluoride is just occurring in few bits of places not in all places only on the kanakpura belt from to tumkur belt uh, near reva college and all and the hardness is there but hardness you need not feel so much of effect of it but the nitrates you have to get it uh, uh, corrected or you have to be aware of it that you have a nitrate or not and also near the places where you have an industry please be aware that the industrial pollution will occur what type of metals they are leaving it out the leaching of the metals heavy metals that are occurring in your it will be easily dissolved in water and it will be get contaminated Owing to intermittent access to water, the informal waste pickers community is getting increasingly depending on tanker and ROs to meet their water requirement. But how safe are they with respect to water quality? To say that water tankers are not at all safe. Why? Because they will collect the water. They have not tested the water, and they will collect it in the tankers which are not at all clean. and lot of coliforms are there inside the tankers only rust everything the iron contaminated will be so so the tankers are not at all safe and you must feel that whether the tankers you are getting it from which bore well whether that bore well is good for that in that area you may not get a proper results of it fully results of it at least the area you are getting it from that area whether the bore well are good or not but the tankers really are not safe and about the rvo nowadays that is what i told you the rvo is really good but not for a long extent and if you have a water which have a uh, hard water don't go for an rvo go only for uv if you have a high nitrate only then go for rvo whose responsibility is it to ensure that the quality of tanker and ro water meet standards see it's a uh, A, a government has to take care of it. The BBMP people has to take care of it. That ensure that all the tankers will have a certificate of water quality. It has been checked and it has to be labeled on the tankers so that and even on the brochures or anything, whatever they they should give a strict measure that from these places only the tankers should be taken and they have to monitor it. And public also they should give a lot of. cry or uh, over it so that these tankers they are getting are not good or bad the water quality is the most important quality of the water drinking water what we are uh, using it and people should aware that even whatever the diseases we are getting it may be due to the water also and one of the only one example i can lastly say is one of the person from kengeri brought a sample and he told me that his wife died because of cancer and the doctor advised this water to be tested people he said ladies are giving complaint because they can't work they are they are so grumbling to work so that is why they say water is bad i am drinking this water i am not getting any problem why do you say but his water was contaminated with nitrates so the cancer which is getting worse day by day on her it may be due to the water because she regularly uses in her house he is going out and out and he will be more, not so much addicted to the household water so we must be aware of it and lastly one more thing i will tell you when you are constructing a house you will for the uh, this thing electrical wire you will put some uh, salt so that for our thing uh, without the knowledge how much salt you have to put so what they will feel is if you put a lot of salt you the earthing will be uh, perfect and you will have for 10 years you will be safe but that salt where it will go it will enter into your underground water which will have a real problem on your health i have seen lot of people suffering for that and, and the thing is collect the rain water 
collect the rain water but collection of the rain water in a proper way don't think that whenever it is falling on the roof it is good there will be a lot of birds so this thing and all it may fall and uh, the, the uh, uh, water will fill, get deteriorated or something if you put it on the uh, terrace and keep it for uh, days and days together collect it in a proper way get it filtered use it for drinking cooking nothing will happen water is very good in the rain water so everybody feels oh we are getting acid water no it is not the how in which place it is falling how you are collecting it all depends but it will be free from all the minerals high high in the higher side so only the coliforms it will enter certainly in some of the places where you are collecting the it is if it is not properly done otherwise i think rain water is the best but the rivers of water is also best unless you get cleaned properly don't put anything to the river or the lake or anything it will get dissolved though it is what they say is flowing water nothing will affect no it will affect somewhere something will happen if your bod level is very low your do is will get affected certainly the water will be get affected and you will get affected so we must be careful as though it is our property our body our clothes how you will keep a, you want a clean clothes to wear you can't put a dirty clothes like that you have to keep your water clean and this awareness has to be done properly and keep your premises clean if today my premises is clean with the water and everything the next day the his premises will be clean so we both will be in the line we are getting a good water that is what everybody should think they don't bother about it but please uh, uh, my advice to you is please give the public awareness plenty so that they must know how to keep their premises and the water clean this conversation has definitely given all our listeners and viewers an insight into the current water and water quality situation in the city of bengaluru it was certainly an eye opener for me that water quality checks need to be performed periodically this brings us to our last episode on the thematic area of water In our next episode, we will have two of our heroes talking about their work and the obstacles they face, which have become a part of their lives. Stay tuned in. I'll be with you again in the next episode.